Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about some tips for building a strong portfolio. And I'm going to cover how to build a portfolio, not only for a developer point of view, but front and back end, a designer. And I think those are the main ones we will cover. However, these tips are relevant for pretty much any role in the tech industry that needs to have a portfolio. Before we get started though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Shout out to these users here as always for asking such great questions, leaving amazing comments and just really being part of this community. I think you all are so wonderful and it means the world to me when you leave your comments and feedback. So thank you. Okay, before we get into specifics for front end developer, back end developer, and say a designer portfolio, let's talk about three areas that really, regardless of what your role is that you are applying for, you need to have in your portfolio. The first one is about me. Have a bit of an about me page or about me kind of area that tells a story, shares as to your journey getting into the current role you are in and kind of gives the employer a little bit glimpse into who you are as a person. This doesn't have to be a technical or very detail oriented story, but just more so, you know, hey, I, I took this course, this interested me. Um, outside of my nine to five, I'm interested in running or in my case, hanging out with my dogs or anything like that, but kind of open up a little bit and share a bit about yourself. The second thing that you need to have, regardless of what kind of portfolio you are creating, is a contact me. And this sounds very obvious, but I have seen so many portfolios where they actually forget to put their email, their phone number, or really any way of the employer or potential employer getting in touch with them. I think it's also a great idea to really highlight the contact me section. So a lot of times it will be at the footer and just kind of tucked away your email address, but really have either a separate tab for contact me or kind of on the main page. This whole point of having a portfolio is to get work, to get noticed, to showcase your work if you're freelancing and people need to get in touch with you. So really make sure that is not something kind of tucked away, but first, foremost and center. And the third thing is, of course, projects. You need to have projects on your portfolio if you are applying for a technical role. And we'll get more into that. I, I had a lot of troubles with that when I was applying uh, specifically for back-end developer roles. So I'll get into that in a second. But anyways, in general, you need to have a project section too to highlight some of your projects. The next question I always get asked, and this is something that I really struggled with when I first was done, um, schooling and applying for my first jobs was, do I need to, as a developer, do I need to build out my portfolio? So, you know, you can go the route of having your projects hosted on say, um, what Squarespace or Wix or anything like that, or you can go the way of actually building your uh, portfolio that will host the project. So there's two different ways. I'll give you my thoughts on both. I think if you are a junior, it's always a great idea to actually build out your portfolio rather than using something such as Wix or Squarespace or anything like that. And the reason for that is your portfolio itself can become a project. You can talk about the way you implemented it, the way you structured it, and the reasons behind that. Whereas if you automatically default to say Squarespace or Wix or one of those kind of things, it kind of shows that you know, you didn't really put much thought into your portfolio right away and kind of took the easy way out. So I don't think there's a right or a wrong way, but if you are able to, I would highly suggest, especially if you are someone who is starting out in the industry, looking for projects to talk about and build, to build your own portfolio. For myself anyways, I remember my first portfolio that I built, it was, I, I, I don't even want to show you. I don't even know if I can show you. It's I took it down now, but it was not good. I mean, it got me a job, but it was not good at all. Um, but that's just kind of a process you go through as you are growing. So don't be too hard on yourself. Obviously make something that's appealing. And I think it's too important that when you are building your own portfolio to not think of it as this big complex thing. I listed three areas that should be on your portfolio. Keep it simple, keep it fresh. Don't go crazy with the designs and the colors. This is just to showcase your projects and the portfolio piece itself should be clean and to the point to do exactly that. For myself, now that I've been in the industry for a while, if I needed a portfolio, which I actually currently do not have an up-to-date portfolio or else I'd show it to you, but I just, I feel like now it's just, I, you know, 
when I'm applying for a job, um, you know, commit different projects to GitHub, send them for my GitHub link. I don't know if that's the best thing to do, but that's just where I'm at. Um, but if I was to make a portfolio now, I would go and just use something like Wix or Squarespace simply because I just don't want to take the time to build one and I have projects and work experience that can speak for itself. But definitely when I was starting out, you need to have that uh, experience building your first portfolio and using that as a project piece too. Okay, let's talk a little bit about though, if you are a backend developer or someone who's applying for backend roles, how do you go about that? It For me, that was a big challenge um, in the sense of, well, all my projects like they don't look that great, you know? So there's two areas you can do. One is if you are focusing on backend development and your projects are not say very design focused or front end heavy, what I would say is if you are able to partner up with someone, if you have a friend who's a front end developer or someone who's a designer and build out those some of those projects and it doesn't have to be five or 10 projects you're doing, try just building out one or two and having it come full spectrum. This also shows the employer that you took initiative to work with someone else to fully kind of realize the project you are building and can talk about it. You're not only your experience building the back end, but also too uh, about working with someone who built the front end or who helped you, you with the design aspect of it. When you're making a portfolio for back end development, what I tend to do is still, if you can um, do some front end work, still kind of put together a nice portfolio, keep it super clean, super simple. I don't think you even need a background color. Like you can just literally be to host your projects on, but just clean. And then, you know, have your links to GitHub or anything else that you have been working on. Okay, I want to list out three mistakes to avoid when you are creating your portfolio. This is something that I think I've experienced all three of them, so I wanna share with you in hopes that you don't encounter them all. The number one mistake I made when I was starting to apply for jobs and building a portfolio was I would put, this is embarrassing to say, but I would put um, a lot of the tutorials that I did, I would put them on my portfolio and just kind of like change them or massage them a bit to appear as my own. This is so embarrassing to say, but I would do that because I was just like, you know, I spent time, I was freaking out and I would just take a tutorial, build it, call it something else, put it on my portfolio and be like, oh, look at this. So don't do that. Please do not do that. Your employer will know when you are trying to talk about the code and you can't because you just copied it from a tutorial, they will know instantly. Um, but you know, tutorials are great and they have their place and it's a necessity when you are learning something. So I'm not taking away from that, but don't let getting into the tutorial kind of, um, loop in, infinite loop, um, become part of your learning process and show on your portfolio. If you did do a tutorial that you really liked and thought, Hey, this would be a good piece. Try rebuilding it from scratch without the help of the tutorial and then you'll be able to at least talk about it. So make sure what you are putting onto your portfolio to be your own. And if you are working with someone else, as I mentioned, say front-end developer or back-end developer, be honest about that, highlight that, because that can also be an actual positive thing instead of a negative, that you are able to work together as a team. Another mistake to avoid is to have a patchy timeline. Of course, we all have actual patchy timelines in life, whether you went traveling or took some time off, and those are important. Those experiences and things you do are really important. Um, so I'm not saying taking away from that, but if you did say take a year off to go traveling or to just work to get some money, include that in your portfolio when you're listing at your work experience or your schooling experience. And why I think that is important is because then there isn't just this like, two or three year kind of mystery to the employer where they can kind of think of different things in their head, but just be honest because it's really, you know, if you took two years to go travel and explore, that's an experience in yourself or in itself. And you can put that on your portfolio as well. You know, went to school for this many years, took a gap year to travel, then did an internship. Like it flows better than, you know, went to school, two years is missing and then did an internship. So make sure your timeline makes sense and isn't this kind of patchy, strange thing to employers because then they're going to start kind of making up scenarios in their head on their own. The last thing that you should really avoid is to have poor project descriptions. And some people will say, well, my project speaks for itself. And yes, sometimes that is true, but when you are applying for a job and the employers are looking at the projects you have built, kind of do a little description of the technologies you used, why you use them, if it was for a client, 
um, about, a little bit about the experience working with the client in a positive light, so obviously this will be online, and um, giving the employer, once again, a story, more detail about the projects. Okay, those are some of my main tips that really helped me navigate or things I wish I knew when I was making my first portfolio. Uh, leave down in the comments below other things that helped you if you are someone who already has created their first portfolio um, or kind of learned from some of these mistakes. And you know, just at the end of the day, keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it fresh, and you'll be good to go. Thank you all for watching my video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Comment down below other videos you want to see and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.